Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discussing something really unusual in regards to already somewhat strange objects, rogue planets. Some of the most enigmatic classes of objects in our galaxy that even today are very difficult to explain and whose origin or even whose properties are kind of mysterious. But these worlds, very often giant in size, still possess enough mass to be considered planets, yet are completely untethered to any star, drifting through vacuum of space completely alone. And the thing is, their very existence to some extent challenges current planetary formation models, or at least creates certain problems for us, because it's not entirely certain if these were produced through violent ejections from the original star system, or if these are objects formed by themselves from some kind of a primordial gas that instead of forming stars ended up creating these miniature objects, condensing directly from gas and dust, but never reaching enough mass to become brown dwarfs or to obviously become stars. And the thing is, for many decades, these objects mostly remained kind of hypothetical and theoretical. This is why they are known as rogue planets. Mostly because they are very difficult to spot, just because they don't really produce any light. But luckily for astronomers, some of the newer telescopes, like the James Webb, do have enough power to observe some of these objects and to reveal some of their secrets. And while some of the more recent discoveries that we're going to be discussing today uncover something super strange, Something that was not anticipated or predicted by anyone. And something that's definitely going to change our understanding of planetary formation. Because here we do have a very strange isolated rogue planet that seems to be going through some really bizarre growth spur, consuming enormous amount of mass that was recently confirmed from these new observations. But here it's important to start with some of the definitions and some of the initial explanations, and of course what we already know about these bizarre objects. And so as I previously mentioned, unlike brown dwarfs, these objects do not contain any kind of fusion and do not produce their own energy. And instead they seem to glow very faintly by emitting thermal radiation from the heat left over from their formation that depending on their mass is going to be a little bit different. So for some of the more massive objects, the ones that are usually at least a few masses of Jupiter, here the heat is enough to make these objects visible from hundreds of light years away. This is actually something that James Webb detected in the Orion system and something we've discussed not so long ago in one of the videos in the description. A discovery of quite a few binary systems that seem to all contain these rogue planets but were massive enough to be easily visible to the James Webb. And despite being initially hypothetical, the first rogue planet to be officially confirmed was discovered back in the early 2000s. It was reported in this study on the population of very young brown dwarfs and free-floating planets in the system of Orion. And since then researchers discovered hundreds and hundreds more. So today we know that this is a pretty common type of an object. And so since their initial discovery, there was this obvious question. How exactly did they form? Were they born independently, similar to stars, or have they just been kicked out from various planetary systems where planets might be injected violently during the early formation? And this question is maybe somewhat important because today it's believed that these objects might represent some of the most numerous objects in the entire galaxy. There might be trillions of them hiding all over the place, with quite a few of them actually not so far away from us. It's just we cannot see them because most of them do not emit enough light. Although luckily for us, the next generation of telescopes, such as the upcoming Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope that's going to be launched in 2027, will most likely help us refine these estimates and discover so many more in the process. Although here I guess I have to stress something really important. Despite their very large numbers, they're not going to be visiting the solar system anytime soon and pose absolutely no threat to our planet or really to anything in the solar system. And so this is something I guess to keep in mind because I'm sure there's going to be some kind of a conspiracy theory about this later on. So no, rogue planets are not going to be destroying anything. But for scientists these are still super interesting objects. And we actually do have at least two major discoveries from just the last few weeks. And well, the first one comes from an object that's been studied for quite a long time now and presents the scientists with another question that needs to be answered. And so this is technically the first official weather report from a completely different object really far away from us. And so here scientists using James Webb Space Telescope recently observed a nearby rook planet referred to as SIMP0136 which is approximately 20 light years away from planet Earth. And this is a pretty massive planet. 12.7 mass of Jupiter and about 20% as large. 
So this is almost a brown dwarf, but because it's so massive, it also produces enough light, or enough infrared light, to be relatively easily visible to the James Webb. And even other telescopes can easily see this object, as you can see from this image. And that's mostly due to its mass. Its mass makes it have a really high temperature, approximately 1500 degrees Celsius, which is obviously much, much hotter than any gas giant in a solar system. But what makes these new observations somewhat intriguing is the fact that scientists were able to capture a lot of data, basically capturing the entire full rotation, which allowed them to see the atmosphere from every angle. Although here it's important to know that the subject is also spinning pretty quick. A single rotation was only 2.4 hours, which is of course 10 times as fast as planet Earth. And this was enough data to study the atmospheric composition, but I guess more importantly, identifying various weather patterns and even potentially proposing what seems to drive them on this planet. Because surprisingly, they did discover certain types of variability inside the infrared brightness. Which of course suggests that a non-uniform atmospheric feature that could have been created either by some kind of a storm or some kind of a different type of cloud distribution. And these non-uniform features are now explained as a combination of possibly three factors. Various types of clouds, various hotspots, and possibly the change in carbon chemistry. But crucially, this recent study suggests that it's these hotspots that may represent something super exciting, auroral activity. Since this object is known to exhibit very strong radio emissions, we know that it has aurora, and so the detection of these hotspots possibly represents the location for these aurora that are very likely massive in size compared to Jupiter or Saturn. And so right now the suggestion is that it's these powerful aurora that are probably heating up the planet's upper atmosphere, which creates a very strange phenomenon referred to as thermal inversion, unlike Earth where the temperature usually drops with altitude and is basically warmest near the surface, in certain locations on this object, there is definitive signs of thermal inversion. The atmosphere is colder near the surface and then heats up as you go up in altitude. And this is potentially the result of the position of energy by the aurora into the upper atmosphere. And these effects are dramatic enough that they're visible from 20 light years away. But on top of this, the subject also seems to have a globally constant cloud cover. Basically it has clouds everywhere. And obviously they're not made out of water, like on Earth, but seem to be composed of silicate grains, or basically tiny particles of sand, that have been detected by the James Webb when observing spectral anomalies. And so this is a pretty exciting object when it comes to studying dynamics in various atmospheres, especially around very strange rogue planets. But more importantly, the complexity seen here, including multiple cloud layers, and these very strange high-altitude hotspots, have also been seen around Jupiter and Saturn, implying that this is maybe some kind of a universal phenomenon for all kinds of gas giants out there. But a much more exciting discovery is of course from this other object from much, much farther away. Here we're talking about 620 light years away from us. And this is the object known as Cha 1107-7626, a young rogue planet that seems to exhibit very, very strange behavior. Here, once again, this is a relatively massive object, approximately 10 masses of Jupiter, but it also seems to be kind of young, maybe about 1 to 2 million years old. And because it's so young, it also seems to still contain some kind of a young disk. Here we can't really call this a protoplanetary disk, because this by itself is already a planet. And so this disk seems to produce what's known as accretion, which in essence would look something like this. But these very recent observations from the Very Large Telescope, combined with the observations from the James Webb, revealed something unprecedented. This object is experiencing astonishing growth spurt. In August of 2025, this planet began gulping down material at record-breaking speed, consuming 6 billion tons every second. This is about 8 times as fast as previous rates observed a few months prior. And this very sudden powerful increase represents the strongest accretion episode ever recorded by any planetary mass object. So basically this is the fastest we've seen any planet grow anywhere. And this is something that has never been predicted by any model, at least when it comes to planetary formation. But this is much more important for another reason. It potentially answers the question of origins. This discovery strongly suggests that at least some of these rogue planets share exactly the same formation path to a typical star. Because here we seem to observe the exactly same mechanism that stars use to grow as well. And so here by comparing the light emitted before and during this burst, researchers observed a dramatic inflow of mass that seemed to be directly controlled by magnetic activity. 
a mechanism that's previously only been observed in stars. And so here, based on some of the previous observations from a lot of young star systems, we know that a lot of young stars, and especially stars less than 1 million years old, essentially use magnetic activity to grow extremely fast and extremely large. This has been observed many times, and this is something that's very common, especially early on. And so here, the growth of stars is almost entirely driven by magnetic fields, that then funnel material into the young star. And since this was not discovered around what seems to be a prototypical rogue planet, this basically blurs the line between stars and planets, because it demonstrates that even low-mass objects seem to possess very similar magnetic fields and seem to be powerful enough to drive massive magnetically driven activity. Which is of course something that none of the planetary scientists expected. But here we have some other discoveries that are also just as important. This planet also exhibits chemical changes in its disk that are also once again similar to typical young stars. For example, during the accretion burst, water vapor was also detected inside the disk, but it was definitely not there before this particular event. And so this chemical transformation that's only been seen in stars before has now been also observed around planets. Or I guess rogue planets reinforcing the idea that various rogue planets seem to behave very similar to baby stars, and thus may actually form in a very similar way, once again representing the idea behind failed stars. They just did not have enough mass to form into actual stars and settled for planetary sizes. And it's actually important to know that these observations are extremely detailed and very accurate. As a matter of fact, this is based on a very powerful long-lasting event known as the Axor-type burst. Something that we always see around baby stars, and something that's been studied for decades and decades. Yet in this case, this object is the first planetary mass object to have experienced something similar. A recurrent burst that in this case lasted for more than two months, and was even still ongoing at the end of the observation period. Which means that there's at least one definitive explanation for how rook planets seem to form. Now this may not apply to all of them, but it definitely applies to some of them. Maybe even most of them. But more importantly, it very likely applies to these jumbles, or these planetary mass objects in the Orion system, that created a bit of a mystery a few years back when they were originally discovered. And so there's a very high chance that this is exactly how all of these objects were formed. But based on these observations from these two rogue planets, we now have a slightly different picture when it comes to rogue planets and when it comes to their formation. And so these new observations and some of the future studies will hopefully help us understand various exoplanets and rogue planets a little bit better, especially as we get better telescopes or as we get additional observations from the telescopes that are really good at detecting these. And so future observations are going to be critical in distinguishing between various theories of their origin and theories in regards to rogue planet atmospheres in order to provide actual explanations and final conclusions. But so far, what's clear about these objects is that they are definitely not very quiet and even not very stable. They seem to be filled with a lot of activity and produce a lot of their own energy and are also places of immense magnetic power, very strange chemical reactions and even violent atmospheric dynamics. And that's something that we could not have assumed when these objects were just discovered decades ago. Which means that we'll come back and discuss these objects even more once there's some additional discoveries or once science discovers something else super bizarre. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few additional videos, or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.